My name is Sylvia Senu. I'm from Ghana, the University of Ghana. I'm actually with the Institute of Statistical, Social and Economic Research in the, in the university. I present to you <laughs> um, findings from um, some small interest I found <laughs> recently on stunting. You may want to ask me what is stunting. Well, from this picture, you can see what I'm, I'm actually trying to um, inform you about. It's actually the, the, um, the reduction in human growth. So children don't get to grow normally as they, they have to. Um, globally, it is estimated that one out of four children are stunted. And uh, there's an estimation of about 165 million children across the world who are stunted. And 90% of these people live in Africa and Asia. Um, there's been actually a continuous reduction in stunting from um, 1990, where we had about 35% of children who were stunted, to now, somewhere around 2011, the last um, estimate they did was about 26%. Stunting is actually a big problem because it reduces the, the child's chances of survival, even from birth. And then when the child is lucky to be born, the, 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 the possibility of not developing fully in terms of mentally and everything is there. And it carries on to, to um, maturity. Um, cash transfer as a means of reducing vulnerability, ensuring adequate um, nutrition, um, access to basic social services, and helping the poor rise out of poverty is acknowledged um, worldwide. Um, such is the case for Ghana. In Ghana in 2008, in 2008 um, the government initiated a policy, a CTT um, program, where conditional uh, cash are transmitted or um, remitted to households who fall below the poverty levels in Ghana. Okay, so the aim of this thing is to help the poor actually leap out of poverty. So, um, even though Ghana has made progress in, in achieving most of the MDGs, this, um, the, the MDGs pertaining to four and five, which has to do with um, maternal mortality and um, child um, mortality and that is, this can actually hinder that progress. So that's why I actually took a special look at this, this topic. So this study will actually assess the impact of the, trans, the program, the cash transfer program that Ghana is having now on the children, uh, human development, you know. So I choose to use data collected by my institute. Um, there we have anthropometry data in there. It's, it's been collected over a period of time. So the first um, baseline survey was done in 2010 and then uh, the second one which is the follow-up was done in 2012. Well, this is just about um, those who collaborated in collecting the, the data. The leap, leap is for, supposed to be those who actually benefited from the program. And then the yield I'm using here as, are my control group. They didn't benefit from the program. So what I actually intend to do is to, so the total sample was about 190 children. Okay, 72 actually for the treated group, and then about 118 for the control group. What I want to do here is to look at children between the ages of 0 to 60 months. Okay, from um, first period to second period. What are the changes in their human development is what I'm looking. So here I employ the double difference um, estimate to look. At, at it so that I want to see what the changes are over time. Does the program have any significant impact on the children human development index? So these are my results. Uh, this is just by way of um, introducing to you the kind of people we're talking about. The mean ages of course are between 24 months. Um, overall there were about 96 males and um, 94 females who made up the total sample of 190.
Microphone, so. Sorry. It is, yeah. Okay, so it is imperative to know that um, some of these households have orphans, they have uh, um, um, the disabled people in their households. Well, as a way of result, without actually running a regression, we saw a general decrease in the trend of of stunting between these households. This is the control group. We realized that they, are, they had a reduction from about 53.4% of children who were stunted in 2010 to 39.8% in 2012. And it also happened for the, control, um, the treated group. So finally, what were the findings saying? The findings were that even though stunting reduced over time, we can't attribute the, the reduction to the program because our interested variable which is the treatment over time was not significant but the, the treat um, the, the time variable which shows just the period at which various um, studies were made were significant um, at about 13 percent for severe um, stunting uh, for normal uh, stunting and at about 18% for severe stunting. Um, other, and also, we noted that stunting was more prevalent among men, um, among um, male children, than in female children. However, other interesting covariates we thought could influence this um, um, explanation it didn't show any significance. Um, mother's education, household income, housing facility, they all seem not to have any um, significant relation with stunting. So our initial, I mean our conclusions are that initial expectation of the transfer program is to improve nutritional um, components of beneficiaries to help curb um, the, uh, the prevalence of stunting. Results however show that the change cannot be linked with this program. This in our opinion could be linked with the shortfall of the program. The, the program implementation process because payments were normally delayed, sometimes not paid. Yeah. yeah. So, by recommendation, we'll just say that um, payments should be regular and more consistent. The amount of money should be more appreciable. Also, mothers should be sensitized um, about the causes and damaging effects of stunting because it actually happens between the first two months of the child and after that it's it's a done deal so from pregnancy to year two you need to feed your children very well thank you thank you very much